What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of stuff we need to cover for you today, especially in the tropics. We have some new model runs we need to show you. We also have some an article that I want to talk to you about real quickly because things are getting really insane uh, sea temperature-wise. So first, we're going to go ahead and give you the rundown. We now have a 50% chance of development of in, what is now Invest 94L in the Atlantic right now. An area of low pressure located more than 700 miles east of Bermuda continues to produce disorganized showers and thunderstorms well south to its center. Environmental conditions are ex forecast to be marginally conducive for the system be to become a subtropical depression or storm over the next couple of days as it meanders over the Atlantic. By the weekend, the low will turn northward and bring the system into cooler waters and limit its development. Additional information can be found at the NWS high seas forecast. 50% chance of development in the next 48 hours so this is something we're going to continue to pay attention to right here if we take a look at the satellite this is what we got going on right here this is 94l in the subtropical atlantic although half of it's a bit in the tropical atlantic the subtropical and tropical line is at 30 degrees north but that's besides the point right now that it is looking a bit disorganized right there, although it is starting to get a bit, it, it's act together a bit more. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on over the next few days. We have also several tropical waves going on. We have a tropical wave going on over here. We have a tropical wave going on by uh, about, about south, southwest of the Cabo Verde. And we have another tropical wave occur starting to come off the coast of Africa over there. All three or th these are in the main development region over here. But now we're going to go ahead and show you some global sea temperatures because what I've been looking at are absolute, the values are absolutely shocking. So here's the global sea temperatures at a greater scale. We're looking at a massive area of 29 degrees Celsius or 84 degree Fahrenheit temperatures from the Gulf of Mexico all the way through the Caribbean Sea through much of the main development region as well and 31 degrees Celsius for parts of the loop current, especially in the Florida Keys, parts of the southern Bahamas, northern Cuba, and the area around Cuba over there. So definitely something to keep an eye on. But one thing I want to show you, I want to show you two things real quickly. First thing is, we're looking at a very good area of around 32 degrees Celsius or about 90 degree Fahrenheit temperatures for parts of Cuba, parts of Florida over here. We're looking at a couple 33 degrees Celsius readings over there, and we actually have an article I wanted to go ahead and show you. Florida's extreme heat wave, wave leads to shocking ocean temperatures. In fact, if we take a look at this, the uh, according to what we have right here, the water temperatures are extremely warm, which include downright shocking temperatures of 92 to 96 degrees in the Florida Keys. Meteorologist and journalist Ben Henson said Sunday in a tweet. We're going to go ahead and pull that up right here just to give you some further context. Now, the Key West is at 92.1. Uh, Vaca Key is at 94.3, Johnson Key, 95.7 degrees Celsius. We also found a buoy that found that had temperatures of over 97 degrees that was located around the Florida Keys as well. So this is an already absolutely incredible situation that we have going on right here, and that will have implications for what will go on during hurricane season. We also have the OHC, which the OHC, we now have two discrete areas of 175 plus OHC, one off the coast of Cuba and another off the coast of Jamaica. The loop current's absolutely looking incredibly good right now. The OHC is over 150 in a lot of areas over here, over 125 from the loop current all the way past Jamaica, all the way through the Caribbean over here. So definitely something we need to continue to pay attention to over there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear and the wind shear has continued to fluctuate as it is typical in July. The wind shear in the eastern uh, Gulf is relatively low around 15 to 20 knots. The MDR is absolutely primed for development if these storms can organize and the moist air continues to form. We'll have to keep an eye on those out there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear model we have right here, as well as the moisture model. We're going to go ahead and show you the shear. The shear from the European across the MDR has this thing, has the shear just becoming more and more favorable for potential tropical development as more waves start coming on. However, by around five days out, the shear does start to increase considerably in the MDR, which would temporarily limit any development going on over there. But that does start to calm down. 
by around the seven day mark or so and then by the 10 day mark you start seeing a very favorable pattern in the MDR not so favorable in the Caribbean Sea as to be expected for now however a more favorable pattern in the Gulf of Mexico as well so I'd say starting around late July maybe July 25th we're going to start seeing the wind shear in the Caribbean start to decrease to a level where tropical development is feasible at least because right now we're looking at like 50 plus knots it's not very good in there and the shear tears apart systems at that speed right there so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the European ensemble runs to see when the next development will be. We're paying attention to that potential subtropical wave that is going on in the subtropical region over there. But one thing I've also been continuing to look at is this area in the main development region over here. As you can see with the subtropical wave, we're looking at a lot of values around 1,008, 1,007, 1,005. That's the most you'll get up to over there most likely. However, starting around seven days out or so, we're starting to see a lot more scenarios in the main development region as that shear starts to clear out. And by around, uh, by around eight days or so, nine days or so, we start seeing more and more scenarios of systems moving west, starting to organize, and starting to strengthen as it approaches the Lesser Antilles over here. We have several models of strong tropical storm to weak, or sometimes moderate, Category 1 strength hitting the, hitting the Lesser Antilles, moving through the Caribbean, and hit, potentially hitting Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and all those areas over there. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on over there. When the next hurricane development could be, I'd have to say that maybe if we're very lucky late July or so, if, the, if we start seeing some development, the shear starts calming down some more, as well as the moist air, which by the way, I forgot to mention this. If we take a look at the moisture around day 10, it is at this point like MDR is pretty decent for uh, that stuff but there is still a lot of Sahara dust that is coming off the coast of Africa which is limiting development for now but we'll have to pay attention to that going forward we're going to next show you the GEPS and then the GEFS uh, runs the GEPS runs basically they have the same tro subtropical system going on we then about 60 hours out we do have some scenarios starting to pop up from those tropical waves that are in the in the atlantic right now however there's not going to be very much coming out of them at least for the next week or so however things really start to ramp up similar to how the european is doing it however they are keeping it a little bit further to the east as they are, none of these systems really have it approaching the MDR until much later on. But that's what we, the extent we have for the GEPS. But definitely something to keep an eye on. We're looking at re record temperatures across the Gulf, across the Keys, across everywhere in the Atlantic. We'll keep an eye on it for you. And for those of you wondering where my where I'm at, why I'm not in my studio, I'm out traveling. I'll be gone for a few days. We'll continue to update you here in the, rem in the remote studio, as I like to put it. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.